Hey guys, this is Jason at Mustang Rehab. Um, today we're doing something a little different. Uh, we have a hedge clipper that needs carburetor cleaned and a new primer button put on it. And Johnny feels we need to videotape it. So this will be a different, this isn't a Bronco or Mustang, but this might help somebody out. My background is small engines. Before I became an engineer and uh, I worked on small engine equipment for uh, half my life it seems like. So uh, I'm just I guess I can share some of my experience with you, and if it helps, I, um, maybe you can fix yours yourself. So uh, I'll just show you what, what I do, how I'll tear the carburetor down, what I look for, and uh, we'll put it back together and see how it runs. So what we're going to do to start with is just kind of blow off some of the, the dirt and mess on it, and uh, just use something that y'all might, anybody can get. You can go to an auto parts place. Just a good can of brake cleaner and what I do to start with is just just kind of clean up sorry just kind of clean it up a little bit before you get started what we have here is an echo HC 150 it's really a good hedge clipper it just uh, the, the fuel will eat the, the primer buttons up on it so if you have some compressed air, good. If not, uh, you can use that toothbrush or whatever. Just kind of blow it off or uh, wipe it off the best you can. It just helps to start with a clean slate there. Then go ahead and remove your air cleaner. And we want to go ahead and uh, remove your two bolts that hold your carburetor on. And that should just come loose. We have our gasket here. Let me set all that to the side for right now. Poland, Ryobi, you have Echo. All your different steels are all going to be just a little bit different, but they basically work off the same premise. Uh, they either have a Zama or a uh, Walbro carburetor on them. So this one is a Zama. Next thing you, I want to do is go ahead and remove the throttle cable. And usually spin it just a little bit. You see it sort of popped out there. Just kind of release the cable. And then I'm going to pop my fuel lines off. I'll just use a screwdriver and just get it loose. Alright. Let me see. My cable's out, carburetor's off. Okay, well, as you can see, here's the problem with this one it's got a broken primer button. The issue with uh, these things go bad so quick is this new fuel, the fuel lines, primer buttons, all that stuff, it, it just really doesn't go well with it. It's only good for about a month, the fuel is, maybe a month and a half, two months before it starts really degrading. And so if you're gonna, if you're gonna run fuel with ethanol in it, you can buy additives or you can also buy your two stroke oil that you mix with your gas, uh, it's got additive in it and it'll keep it from turning bad. I've actually, my, my weed eater, I haven't opened the carburetor up on it since I had my shop and uh, I graduated college, closed my shop over 12 years ago and it's still running. But I, I use a good oil, but I do use ethanol gas. So it's, it's just about what you put in it. If you're going to buy junk oil and bad gas, this is what you get. So, alright, so that's four screws. On this Zama, it's got a fifth under the button. Wipe off some of that. You can just see how it's turning green. You can tell that it's set a little bit, a little while. Yeah. 
Yeah, you can see that fuel coming out of it. This is the reed side. This is called your reed. This is sort of what meters to fuel through the carburetor. It detects pulses from the piston going back and forth inside the engine. Anyways, uh, we'll just make sure this is good and clean. There's no garbage in it. The reed's off of it. Uh, this is the fuel diaphragm side of your carburetor. I usually give it a little wrap because a lot of times the gas gets st stuck sort of like this one is and sometimes that helps it just sort of pop loose because if not you'll end up tearing the gasket and I don't want to do that and as a hint sometimes you can remove the diaphragm from the gasket before you can remove the gasket from the body of the carburetor so if it's sort of stuck like this one and it doesn't come right off I'm just going to peel it. I'm just going to peel it off of the, the gasket. There we go. It just it was on there pretty good. All right. Here's something else. If you're cleaning a carburetor, here's something to check for. Let me dab some of the fuel off of it. All right. If you take this and you move it in and out, if you're holding one in. That one makes a little noise, but if it sounds like paper, if it's really, really uh, hard, your diaphragm is bad. You need to replace it. This one's kind of borderline. I think it's going to be okay. But if it snaps when you're pushing it in and out, you need to get you a new diaphragm. Now we'll remove the float. So it just all falls out. This is your needle. Let's see if you can see that there. We're just going to go ahead and dis disassemble this thing completely so we can make sure it's got a real good clean. That's all the screws out. So now, what I want to do is I'm going to take that brake cleaner and I'm just going to methodically just check all the passages and just clean it nice and easy and make sure that we get everything out of it and uh, blow it out real good. We'll get it reassembled. Got it nice and blown out. I'm gonna use my compressed air and just blow it out real good now. Away from all my parts because those will scatter. Alright, here's a little trick. I know it's gonna look crazy. Usually you can use a tip cleaner, a welding tip cleaner. If you just have an old steel brush around, take it and pop you one of the wires out. And then you can use this to check all your orifices. And uh because that's what you want to be clear. I don't know if you, yeah, you can see that and usually a steel brush is, is nice and sturdy so you can use that just to, to probe all the all your different holes it's usually in there there's one of course you have for your fuel and that one's fine this one doesn't have adjustment screws on it like some that you might be looking at, you know, 
they keep trying to take more and more control away from everybody. They don't want you to be able to adjust it because they know what's best, they think. have a little bitty one. I don't even know if you can see that. I'm pointing to it with the, with the wire. Okay, there it is. Yeah. So I'm going to probe that one too. Make sure we're good to go. Now I'm going to do the same thing with my the brake cleaner again. Oops, sorry, I sprayed Johnny. Just gonna put my gun over there. You see the air coming out of there? That lets me know that it's clear. See it bubbling? Hope it's picking that up. To Home Depot and just picked up their little tune-up kit. It says for Ryobi, but like I said, most of these will use will interchange in parts, especially primer buttons, fuel line, fuel uh, fuel filter for the tank. So I'm just going to go ahead and put the fuel line kit in it with the new primer button, and we'll see how it runs. I went ahead and cleaned up the reed. Just blew it off real good, made sure there's no dirt behind it, and uh, sprayed it down with the brake cleaner also. Okay, like I told you, with the Ryobi package, this being the Echo, it really doesn't matter. This one, the primer button, see? Same thing. So it's no big deal. So, see, there it goes there. Okay, you see that the primer button fits in. I've got my screws. All right, this one goes in. I can probably just push it up. But you have these little stands. Just in case you took yours apart, let me explain. The reed, this is very thin, and then the gasket. All right, when you put, it's backwards on the diaphragm, so I just wanted to show you this. The reed, the very thin piece, plastic looking, goes against the carburetor first, and then the car, and then the gasket behind it. Okay, so that goes together. Then your primer button. So we have that in. Now we'll go to our fuel side. Again, this carburetor is very clean. So if yours has a lot of, it's a, a dark gray or I mean a dark brown goo in it, you're in trouble. So the carburetors have actually gotten really cheap over the years since I was in business. What I used to soak them in was you could buy um, Purple Power for whatever reason, it's a cheap chemical, but you buy it at Walmart, Purple Power will cut that old fuel. So you can do that, or you can spend $25 on eBay and buy you a new carburetor. But anyways, this is how you do it if you want to clean your own. What I do is I just make sure my needle is good and clean. There's no hairs on it or anything. And you just oops, get it dropped in the hole first. And this is your spring. This is always the fun part. But I'm going to 
spring set up. Then I just sort of grab this, place it on top of the spring, under the little knob there on top of the pin, on top of the float needle, and just hold it down. Just make sure it's pushed in, and then this is the screw. Okay, my spring isn't under it just right, but you just take your screwdriver and... So I had to loosen it up a little bit to set the spring right. It, it jumped up, so it's halfway holding itself. So there's that little wire. There we go. I saw it pop loose. Now it's straight on the little pin up underneath. as possible. Alright, sorry. So now you see that's there. This is tight. And the setting for for this where it's supposed to be is a straight edge. So if you take anything straight, it should just pass over the top of your of your tang there. So if it's too high, it, you, it'll sit there and it'll flood out. You'll you'll run fuel into your engine. It'll drip out of the carburetor. So that's set correctly. This was what I was talking about. The diaphragm and the gasket, it's backwards from the reed and the gasket. So when you put your diaphragm on, your gasket goes against the carburetor first, then your diaphragm. And that's how this one's set up. I didn't separate them, so they're still there. So as you can see, I'm just going to put it straight on, and the cover. Screws. All right. Lastly, the needle. All right, now there's a there's a way you can adjust the fuel flow, you know, if you're having trouble. What they do is way down inside here, they'll put a dop of glue or whatever, but actually this needle, I'm sorry, there we go. That copper needle you're seeing there, brass, has got a uh, an adjustment where you could get to it, but you have to scrape the the mess off on the inside. But I've only had to do that in extreme cases, and and that was trying to make it work. But hopefully we won't have to do that on this one. All right, so we're just going to reassemble like it come out. Let's see, do, do, do. There's a screw here, and then screw there, so I know this goes back like that. All right, so we've got everything uh, bolted back on the carburetor. I'm just going to reinstall it the way I took it off. We'll go ahead and put my throttle line back on. My throttle cable. And I'll just bring it over here. It's got a hole on one side. I'm going to make sure I get that hole lined up. Let's see. I got it backwards. So I'll just twist that all the way around. There it goes. Okay. I believe there's a gasket. Just pop the corner off, but it's okay. 
what I'm doing is I'm making sure my gasket's turned the correct direction. And you can see, see this little smiley face looking thing. It's just a, a port. It's where it's getting its, uh, uh, the pulse from the cylinder. And then just the way the carburetor uses it. So I know my gasket goes back just like this. I'll put the fuel lines on. Alright, here's a way to tell which fuel line does what. Sometimes you can put your finger over it and it will hold the button in. But in this case, this one right here, when I pump the button with my finger and I'm just putting my finger over the end of the uh, the the barb where your fuel line goes, that one's pushing out. It's, it's, so that tells me this is from the filter, this one's back to the tank. You need to check that on your carburetor if you don't remember where your fuel lines go. Your filtered line is always the line that's drawing fuel to the carburetor. Your primer button pushes the fuel back into the tank. So since this one's pushing air out, I know it's tr it will push fuel back in this direction to the gas tank. All right, we're going to replace the fuel lines. So what I did is I'm just gonna pop this grommet out of the tank and then work the filter out. All right, so I'm just pulling the fuel lines down. This is our return from the carburetor. This pushes the fuel back to the carburetor. This is our main fuel line. And this is starting to get squishy. And so I know that it's going bad. So we will replace that. This right here is a breather. I'm just going to leave it alone. You can tell somebody I've wrapped this thing with uh, looks like Teflon or something. These, these things will start swelling over time. If you don't have one, you just have to put something on it to help sort of hold it in the tank. I don't have one today either. We're just going to get it working. Okay, real quick, I'm going to show you what I'm going to do instead of the Teflon. I just grab a an o-ring and just push it on here and that sort of helps tighten this up inside the tank and it'll last a little while longer this I know it's not the proper way to fix it but when you don't have it you have to learn to improvise so again just an o-ring slip over there and then I'm gonna push it back in the tank and then I'll feed my lines through just hold a little pressure As your lines go in, it's going to tighten it up even more. This line comes pre-cut. You know, you always just put just a little angle on them. And then I'm just going to shove it in there. Here's the fuel lines. I showed you I stuck this one here. And then it came with this other line. This line is too stiff to be the filter line. This line really needs to be the filter line, but the problem is, is it's too short. It really needs to, the line needs to reach at least three quarters of, uh, three quarters of the way through the tank. That way it sits on the bottom and the filter can move around when you're turning your hedge clipper up and down. The problem with this fuel line here is too stiff and you stick it in here, even with the weight of the filter on it, it's still going to stick up. I, I know it. I've, I've seen it too many times. Again, I'm having to improvise. I had to uh, go raid my old trusty box of uh, goodies that I never threw away. But what it is, I have a coupler, and I'm going to use the uh, the yellow line here as my filter line. It's too short, but what I'm going to do is I'm going to run it in the tank, and I'll put my coupler on it, and then we'll run it down to the carburetor. And that way I have this, this line is much more pliable and it'll move around inside the tank like it needs to. So when you guys see that, again, sometimes you have to improvise and that's what we're doing here today. So, new fuel filter. And I can just put that 
that in there. Got plenty of them. Nice coupling. Cut off what I need. It might be too much still. And it's tight. I'm just gonna cut an angle. through. Again, that's just my return line. So now I should be able to prime the button. And we should, there we go. Let's see the fuel coming through. And the fuel is going in the correct direction. Alright. Gas cap back on it. I'm going to go ahead and clean the filter a little bit. Just wipe it off. And we'll blow it out with air. That's it. So now we'll see for the crank and see what it sounds like. Alright, um, I could be movie magic and say I cranked it up and it ran perfect. It didn't. <laughs> but I want to show you this. That's why I did this video so I could probably show you some of the little tricks that I've learned in the past. When I cranked it, it was still, I could tell it was very lean. It, it still needed fuel. These carburetors don't have adjustments that you can get to. But again, I had a shop and over the years I found certain ways that you can, you can get to the adjustment on these carburetors. And let me show you. All right. In the end, in the end of your carburetor here, uh, where that nut is, right down the center of that hole, like I said, they had some plastic in there. They, they pour plastic or it's a little daub of glue. I don't know if you can see that. But if you remove that, and the way I remove it is all you have to do is take your drill bit, stick it in there, and just start turning it slow, and you'll feel it turn loose, and it'll actually just back out. It'll come out with the bit. Well, as soon as you do that, voila you can get a screwdriver in the end of that and what that does is that increases or decreases your needle uh, the needle seat inside the carburetor so now that I was able to adjust that it runs very good so it's just a trick and take it or leave it but it, it works I've done it several times I was hoping I didn't have to do it on this one and again I could have just said oh it ran great but it didn't but uh, hopefully this helps you you can fix these things yourself it's really not that hard give it a shot if you got a question send it uh, anyways uh, thanks for watching subscribe and I'll see you next time